This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. In spite of modern science, industry, and our latest technological tinkerings, humankind still depends deeply upon the wisdom of the past. Doctors yet today take the oath written by Hippocrates 400 years before the birth of Christ. Democracy began in ancient Greece, and our modern courts are based upon the laws of Rome 2,000 years ago. Our contemporary calendar is fashioned after the ancient Egyptian one, and our 60-minute hour was borrowed from the early Babylonians. And a truth is no less true for being old. So with the teachings of Jesus, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man are every bit as practical and relevant today as the Egyptian calendar and the Hippocratic Oath, for the life and teachings of Jesus will never, ever die. To multiplied millions of human beings, religion is the dullest of all dull subjects. And yet, 2,000 years ago, there lived a Galilean carpenter who was able to stir the citizenry of his day to awe, excitement, and commitment over this very subject, religion. But why would it be that 20 centuries later, many regard his message to be dull? The reason for that is that 20 centuries later, so little of what people have heard is really the message that that carpenter proclaimed. If modern humankind seems uninspired by Jesus' message, it just could be because modern humankind has yet to hear it. I mean really to hear it. What has been proclaimed has predominantly been a religion about Jesus, rather than the robust and joyous, vigorous and victorious religion of Jesus. What this man really taught and did and said. For centuries, the most peculiar, even unbelievable theories have been propounded in theological circles regarding who Jesus was, what his purpose was, what message it was that he bore, and yet his own teachings on this matter are oftentimes radically at odds with what people have been taught that he said. His emphasis was simply upon the dynamics of the spiritual life, on finding and knowing God, on what Jesus termed living the abundant life, in the love of God and the love of others, which he once declared summed up all of the law and the prophets, all of the Hebrew religion of his own day and before. He enlivened his listeners with a lively sense of the immediacy of God, not that the deity is a dark and distant theological thundercloud hurling lightning bolts of wrath and anger upon a cringing humankind, but that God is a wondrously loving Father, keen in understanding, eternal in patience, a God who loves each son and daughter on this earth with an everlasting love that will not let you go, a God who knows each time a sparrow flutters to the ground and numbers the very hairs on your head, who desires good, for all people, Jesus' God was not an abstract cosmic concept, but an alive and loving personality. Certainly, God is far more than a personality, but in human terms, God is at least a personality. God can know and be known, love and be loved. God is spirit, taught Jesus, an ever-present nearness who knows all that you are and all that you could become, who calls humanity to eternal life, who has a dynamic plan and a purpose in mind for every individual who will seek for it in trust. It was this ringing and resonant message of joy that so enthralled the thinking and swept the souls of men and women 2,000 years ago. And what this Jesus of Nazareth taught in that age remains yet true in this age. The finding and knowing of God are the supreme satisfactions of mortal existence. And they may be yours as well, if you will have the faith to claim them in this moment. Traditional Christianity has spent more time teaching the importance of how Jesus was born and why Jesus died than the way Jesus lived and the truths Jesus taught. Somebody mailed me a tract one time, one of those little leaflets you see people handing out on the streets. It was titled, Seven Steps to Becoming a Christian. It quoted seven scriptures on how to become a Christian, but not one of those scriptures was a quotation from Jesus. That is the truth. Now think for a moment of the major religious ideas you have learned in your lifetime. If you were reared in a Christian denomination, then ask yourself how many of those ideas were taught by Jesus of Nazareth himself versus how many were the religious traditions, interpretations, and theologies about Jesus and what he taught. 
That is why I reiterate that there is a religion of Jesus over and against the many religions about Jesus which have characterized the 2,000 years since his birth. And what this man actually said is so simple that you need not have memorized half of the Bible to comprehend it and begin to live the life of new power and zest and joy and love. He was proclaiming the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, that God loves you, that God has a wonderful will for your life and can totally transform you if you will give your life to the God who gave you your life in the first place, that you are a son or daughter of the everlasting God. Jesus once declared, I and the Father are one. And another time he said, He who has seen me has seen the Father. What a majestic miracle. How could God become man? How could the infinite deity, in some sense, have become a squirming baby in a Bethlehem manger? I cannot tell you how. But then I'm not certain I understand how a seed becomes a flower or how water can turn to steam and to ice, or by what mysterious process my speaking into this radio microphone is able to transmit my voice invisibly for thousands of miles in only a segment of a second. Incredible! Who really can comprehend such mysteries as these? And yet, in the life and the teachings of Jesus of Nazareth, I do behold divinity. I see what God is like. In his love, I discern God's love. In his strength, understanding, compassion, and forgiveness, I see the very strength, understanding, compassion, and forgiveness of the living God. He was and is the Son of God, revealing in one personality both humanity and divinity. The major mission of Jesus' life was the liberation and inspiration of humanity's spiritual nature. He functioned primarily as a teacher of truth by illuminating the darkened human intellect he healed troubled souls and emancipated the minds of men from their hindering heritage of fear and superstition. His life was and is an edifying ideal of God-guided living. His purpose was to set man spiritually free. But Jesus' life is more an inspiration than an example, not so much to be imitated point by point in our behavior today, but rather to be a spiritual stimulus to creative and courageous living as sons and daughters of the living God. Jesus was not so much a militant revolutionist as a progressive evolutionist. He undercut that which was only when he simultaneously taught what ought to be. The truths which he spoke made a direct appeal to the divine spirit which indwells the minds of humankind. Only when by fear and prejudice men closed their minds to this inner spirit did they cease to grow. For the greatest adventure in all of human life consists in seeking to do the will of God. And this Jesus majestically exemplified. Erasmus declared, by a carpenter humankind was made, and only by that carpenter can humankind be remade. The Jewish author Sholem Ash once wrote, Jesus Christ is the outstanding personality of all time. No other teacher, Jewish, Christian, Buddhist, Mohammedan, is still a teacher whose teaching is such a guidepost for the world we live in. Other teachers may have had something basic for an Oriental, an Arab, or an Occidental, but every act and every word of Jesus has value for all of us. He became the light of the world. Why shouldn't I, a Jew, writes Sholem Ash, why shouldn't I, a Jew, be proud of that? End of quote. Consider this reason for the study of the life and the teachings of Jesus. Are you not impressed to see the sort of people he impressed? Simple, rugged Galilean fishermen, farmers, sheep ranchers, boat builders, called him master. And after he died, you can be certain that late into the night, a thousand campfire stories were told about him, his character, his humor, and his charm. The way he had of saying so much with so few words the way the hypocrites trembled in his presence, the way he was such fun to be with, hiking all over Palestine, talking with spiritual seekers, laughing and planning and working side by side with him. And if you could have heard those fireside reminiscences, would you not have wished that you could have known him as well? I am impressed by the people who were impressed by Jesus. These were practical and earthy men and women. They wouldn't have followed some mad mystic or deluded daydreamer. 
He had to be a real man. And I'm impressed by the people who've been impressed by Jesus through the centuries. Philosophers, scientists, authors, inventors, artists, statesmen, laborers, housewives, common and uncommon, men and women alike, have found themselves spellbound by the life that he lived and the words that he spoke. For here was a man who not only depicted what God is like, but what human beings were intended to be as well. You are a son or daughter of the living God, taught Jesus. You are infinitely valuable and infinitely loved. And to believe that is to begin to live in newness of life, this moment. But who was he, really, this Jesus of Nazareth? We date our very calendars from his birth, and yet... And yet, who was he? It has been said of Jesus that he put on humanity that we might put on divinity. He lived in poverty. He was reared in obscurity. He had no wealth, no college education. And yet the profoundest wisdom of humankind has never equaled his discourses and his Sermon on the Mount. Never did man speak as this man, and we read that the common people heard him gladly. His relatives were inconspicuous, uninfluential, but in infancy, he startled a king. In boyhood, he puzzled the theologians at 12 years of age, proving he was far in advance of the rabbis, for he was taught of God. He healed the multitudes without medicine, made no charge for the good that he did. He never wrote a book, yet not all the libraries in the country could hold the books that have been written about him. We have no human record that he ever wrote a song, and yet he has furnished the theme for more songs than all the songwriters combined. He never founded a college, and yet all the schools together cannot boast of as many students as he. He never marshaled an army, drafted a soldier, nor fired a single shot, and yet no leader ever made more volunteers who have under his orders made rebels stack arms and surrender without a shot being fired. Great men and women have come, and they have gone, and yet he lives on. Herod could not kill him, evil could not seduce him, death could not destroy him, and the grave could not contain him. He laid aside his purple robe for a peasant's gown. He slept in another's manger. He cruised the lake in another's boat. He rode on a borrowed beast. He was buried in a rich man's tomb. And he yet lives today. For he is Jesus of Nazareth, the living Christ, the Son of the everlasting God, who came proclaiming that you and I and all of humankind are sons and daughters of the everlasting God as well. Know that in living faith and live forever. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviate it, SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, all this literature, yours with no cost, charge, or obligation. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day. <laughs>